Uh, good. Yeah. So, like, uh, well, I am. Um, I try to define so the topic as the way to writing, but then I thought, uh, well, the uh, probably I don't want so to uh, talk uh, too much about uh, theoretical uh, things and probably things which uh, nobody actually uh, uh, knows for uh, for sure. And I thought that I will uh, better present along with that uh, also some uh, so to say. Um, uh, study cases uh, and uh, in this uh, sense it will be not only the way to writing but also the ways of writing in Phrygia and beyond. Uh, okay so accordingly uh, so my um, I think so it would be uh, better if I could um, mm, okay so I probably cannot uh, move it completely out yeah uh so the uh, so the first part so the it will be some more general introduction to phrygians uh, i will say something about origins uh, well of course i should mention something about language ethnocultural area society and so on and in the in the second part uh, so i will present uh, so the um, actually what in essence is the the results of the of my work probably uh, the last uh, two years approximately. Something will be, uh, well, the um, sort of general presentation uh, of what I have written in uh, some forthcoming papers. Something is uh, not written at all and so will be written and something is just uh, what, what I'm working just now in Cambridge. Uh, okay, um, sorry, I, I think so. I will try to uh, sort of get, yeah. This would be better, probably. Um, so, who are actually the Phrygians? Um, so you can see. Uh, so we know, of course, uh, Phrygians uh, both from uh, inscriptions and um, like material culture, and uh, you can see so the uh, general distribution of the uh, inscriptions, which is in a way um, well. It's good because it gives the uh, so the general idea of the Phrygian uh, um, area, but it's in a way misleading. So because it does not represent so how uh, how actually how many inscriptions we uh, we know and uh, what stands behind these point uh, these points. So in in essence, uh, it's uh, about uh, six inscriptions on stone, and even that uh, number is a little bit uh, well um, sounds. Um, sounds more impressive than it is because so many inscriptions are uh, very short uh, some of them are uh, very fragmentary and so and uh, some of them actually give uh, almost nothing uh, in terms of uh, knowledge about the language culture or anything and uh, we have about uh, well uh, now it's i think so probably even uh, in the direction of 400 uh, graffiti on pottery uh, sometimes uh, metal vessels mostly from Gordian. And uh, so below you can see so the uh, principal publications, uh, and uh, so it's nice, uh, nice to uh, to note so that just this year, I think in January or February, so the the book by uh, Bartolomeo Obrador Kursac um, has been published, uh, and uh, so which which is like uh, sort of uh, tries to take a stock of the uh, our present uh, knowledge of the Phrygian language. It's quite linguistically oriented. Um, so this is the map of um, well Anatolia uh, um, around uh, 800 BC. Uh, so once again, I should uh, emphasize that all frontiers, uh, uh, as uh, as they are shown, are uh, quite approximate. Uh, so um, so mostly, uh, so they they are uh, they were quite fuzzy. But in any case, so the uh, the main point of this map is to uh, give you some idea uh, how. How huge was actually a uh, Phrygian ethnocultural area? Uh, so this area, uh, which we can define on the basis of uh, inscriptions, of combination of the of, of the evidence, inscriptions, uh, material culture, um, uh, the um, evidence of uh, classical sources, uh, and of course art. Yeah, so we can uh, ident uh, well the uh, identify. Uh, associate a certain style with uh, with the Phrygian uh, culture. Okay, but um, the uh, this is the the picture which we have uh, around this time. Probably it will um, it was uh, comparable a little bit later. 
But what about the origin of the regions and who, who they are actually? Uh, so, first of all, so there are some uh, literary evidence. So that um, so the evidence uh, which well predefined in a way uh, so the perception of regions and uh, so on several occasions uh, Herodotus is quite uh, explicit about the uh, so the origin of uh, frigions so he apparently had uh, uh, no doubt uh, and uh, so about the the general uh, so the, the general idea so that the frigions are actually newcomers in Anatolia and so they came from uh, from the Balkan region and uh, so the uh, his idea was that uh, so the uh, the Beriges, um who are the uh, neighbors of uh, Macedonians, um, well the sort of uh, the um, remnants of regions uh, uh, who stayed in Europe. This is a little bit uh, questionable if it's indeed so the same or it's a little bit um, well can be a little bit modif modified, but in any case, yeah. Um, on some other, um, in some at some uh, other points, so he um, tells this story, uh, which is like a little bit, well, strange, I would say. Uh, so he uh, tells us about the Garden of Midas, son of Gordias, and Midas is actually so the the most uh, the most famous uh, king of uh, Phrygians, and uh, so he was his seat was definitely in Gordium. Uh, so in central Anatolia, and it's uh, absolutely not clear how uh, his garden could be located in uh, in uh, Macedonia, basically. But in any case, yeah. So um, this is the his uh, his idea, and he also mentions uh, Silenos. Uh, so uh, this is quite interestingly one of the figures which were indeed associated so with uh, uh, Midas, uh, but also in, uh, with Phrygian uh, Phrygians in general, and so also with uh, Phrygian music. And um, quite abundantly, uh, also Strabo uh, tells us uh, something about uh, Phrygians. And um, so, in uh, so uh, this uh, this passage and some other passages, um, in a way, well, so they are formulated. So um, I would say I would term it a little bit more scientifically. And um, he. In any case, one can uh, make this uh, conclusion. He uh, does his best uh, to represent, uh, to, to describe his vision of the, uh, well, ethno, ethnocultural history of Anatolia. And um, so I uh, specifically work on the, on the uh, like the uh, ethnolinguistics of uh, Asia Minor. And so the more I read uh, this passage, the more I work with, uh, with this material, uh, so the more I think that, yeah, so he, he got actually so the many things uh, quite right. So in his way, uh, but still, um, so I um, probably uh, cannot modify too much his uh, picture. Uh, probably, uh, so one should uh, only keep in mind so that uh, Thracians uh, um, was the general term uh, for the for the Balkan population, so one one should not uh, well be to uh, uh, to ascribe uh, so the the meaning to uh, Thracian to what we understand. Usually, it's a different uh, different branch of Indo European. Okay, so on on the map it looks like that. So this is the map uh, taken from uh, uh, Barrington uh, Atlas, uh, and uh, so this location is quite uh, conventional, I would say. So it's somewhere in the mountains, uh, mountainous uh, regions uh, which encircle Macedonia. So it's probably not exactly there, and probably so the area of uh, of the fridge of the Brugai was a little bit uh, broader, but in any case, somewhere there. And um, I think uh, so. The at some uh, at this point, so probably it's uh, worth uh, saying that um, it would be probably not quite correct uh, to think that the Phrygians uh, come from from there, from uh, from this uh, so mountainous region uh, to the north uh, west of uh, Macedonia. I think uh, so. In on general um, reasons, it would be um, more logical to think. Uh, that uh, Brugai are actually a different uh, branch of um, well of 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 of, um, of an ethnolinguistic group, which came uh, from a more northern region, and at some point, uh, so uh, in a in a region which which was a little bit to the north of this area, so they split, 
And so one, one group ended up in the mountains region uh, close to Macedonia, and the other group just crossed the Hellespont and um, turned out to be in Anatolia. What is quite interesting that uh, so the uh, so this evidence um, about migration of uh, Phrygians from the Balkans and uh, so where they reasonably uh, can be assumed to be neighbors of the Greeks finds quite a good corroboration in uh, in the linguistic material. So I don't want so to uh, so to to go into, into detail uh, about the the language. Um, so yes, it will. Yes, so it will um, require probably uh, another hour or so to, to to clarify. But in any case, yeah, this uh, short uh, list of examples give um, will give you probably some idea so that the the Phrygian as we uh, see it was at least uh, in some uh, segments uh, quite close to Greek. Uh, well. Um, one of the probably one of the most striking uh, features is the development of the laryngeals, which, uh, well, as far as I can, uh, what one can see, uh, quite exactly corresponds to that in in Greek, and uh, which was the reason why uh, many birds uh, sounded well, either exactly or nearly exactly as they sounded in Greek, as onoman, uh, deos for teos. Um, or aner, which is uh, quite exactly the response. And uh, so also uh, there are some morphological things which are quite strikingly Greek, uh, for example, tetic manos, uh, whatever it means. Uh, so everybody who knows a little bit Greek can uh, identify a participle in it. So there are also some specific uh, lexical uh, correspondences, uh, well, as uh, which are uh, exclusively uh, exclusive uh, Phrygian Greek uh, isogloss as afto, for example. Another thing which um, uh, Phrygian shares with the Greek, uh, but also with uh, Armenian and um, uh, and uh, Indo-Iranian is the so-called augment. Uh, and so on. So there are some some other things. Uh, some some of them are like, uh, for example, what I what I uh, listed in the what, what I uh, put under the number five is a thing which is uh, not accepted by by but by everybody, but it's um, probably uh, not impossible. Um, but along with uh, with their similarities, uh, Phrygian uh, well displays uh, quite a number of uh, differences. Um, Quite natural on uh, almost every level. I uh, listed here only uh, only some differences on the phonetic level. Uh, so, which probably so the one of the things which uh, makes uh, uh, quite a lot of difficulties uh, for us. Um, not not always, uh, but still. Uh, so, one of the things uh, uh, was the loss of the um, old uh, Indo-European uh, aspirates. Um, so which uh, which just uh, so they uh, just lost their uh, aspiration uh, and uh, so, so this is the uh, for example one of the uh, things which is uh, responsible for this difference uh, between fruges and briges or bruges. Uh, so the uh, uh, it's quite str a strange a strange thing. Uh, so because finally, uh, so what we would expect in Phrygian would be a uh, bruges. Uh, so this is the uh, thing, uh, but uh, it's uh, quite unclear why Greek preserved uh, this form uh, and not uh, bruges, which which we, we would expect. So the and um, quite interestingly, but also uh, in a way very logical uh, that uh, so at least this phonetic uh, feature. Uh, Phrygians, uh, Phrygian uh, seem to share with the Macedonian, uh, and uh, so Macedonian is a uh, uh, well the uh, separate question uh, and uh, quite a difficult and um, and muddy question uh, in itself. Uh, what what is that? But one of the things uh, which which is uh, well it used uh, to demonstrate the difference with the Greek uh, and de demonstrates that the, that the Macedonian is not simply a Greek dialect is the uh, forms uh, so of uh, like for example personal names uh, as uh, Feren uh, Berenike uh, instead of Ferenike, which is uh, so behind which stands exactly the same uh, phenomenon of the loss of aspiration. And uh, apparently, so the uh, uh, the second point, uh, this is the point which I would um, 
one of the most problematic actually uh, point and um, which might be connected so with uh, with the uh, Anatolian uh, substratum influence. I'm not quite sure. So the uh, so the um, what the the situation how I represented in the uh, uh, in point two uh, basically follows the uh, the representation uh, by uh, Lubotsky uh, and uh, Ligorio, um, and um, I would agree with that uh, mostly. But I think that uh, the situation uh, could be a little bit different, and uh, I would not exclude that uh, Phrygian uh, existed in a number of uh, dialects already as early as uh, 800 BC. And so the um, reflection of the uh, protein European media might be actually different in uh, different dialects, and uh, so that might be one of the things. Uh, responsible for for this uh, like um, little bit chaotic situation, which uh, uh, seem, we, we, sometimes it seems to be. Okay, and uh, but not only language, uh, but also um, some indications of material culture seems to uh, confirm uh, the uh, the idea. So that the Phrygians uh, migrated from the Balkan region to Anatolia. And uh, this is the so-called uh, Nopt or Barbarian wares, uh, found most uh, most famously in uh, Troy uh, 7b. Sometimes it's uh, specified even uh, to uh, 7b2, but I think so. They are already uh, present in some um, in some quantity in uh, seven. Uh, uh, in a toy uh, seven uh, B one, so which is uh, just just after uh, twelve hundred BC, and uh, so it's quite uh, obvious that uh, so some sort of migration uh, indeed um, has taken place uh, just after the well what we term uh, the end of the Bronze Age. Uh, so the question is, of course, uh, if if that were uh, the Phrygians we know, or somebody else. Or uh, was it only part of Phrygians, uh, some group of Phrygians, uh, or probably uh, it was uh, it were not Phrygians at all, but uh, for example Thracians. Um, in any case, uh, there is uh, another problem which um, should be taken uh, into consideration, uh, and so the. The point is that we do not know uh, much about uh, the north. Western part of Anatolia in the uh, Bronze Age. So basically, so we uh, practically uh, all material which we have uh, comes from Hattusa, and uh, so we uh, we know of course um, pretty well about the uh, distribution of um, of the um, Hittite um, monuments uh, of, of Hittite material culture of the Hittite uh, ethno ethnolinguistic area. We know something about uh, Lubians, but we do not know uh, much about the uh, western frontiers of the of Anatolia, of this region. And uh, actually, there is no uh, special reason to think that all Anatolia was, so to say, Anatolian in linguistic sense. The uh, the part which uh, which was quite close to the Balkans could be uh, already in at least partly, so to say, Balkanized. And I think uh, there is uh, one uh, piece of evidence uh, which comes, um, well, which um, probably there are several pieces of evidence, but probably so one of the most suggestive pieces comes from the uh, the so-called uh, Kizildar uh, Karadakh group of inscriptions. Uh, so they are later, uh, but probably not uh, not much later than the uh, so the Hittite Empire. So the the end of Hittite Empire, they might be dated to the uh, um, first or second uh, century after the fall of uh, of the Hittites. And in uh, in this group of inscriptions, which belongs to uh, the king uh, named uh, Hartapu, so. We seem to uh, find uh, some, um, well, indications actually on the, uh, uh, on, uh, on the fact that the um, the massa, well, migrated or spread beyond the original uh, late Bronze Age uh, area. And uh, well, the uh, of course this is the. Uh, 
matter of interpretation, uh, but it seems uh, um, to um, that uh, in Kiseldach form, so the uh, the main uh, the, the the main uh, idea which is expressed is not about some conquest, uh, but uh, rather about uh, consolidation of um, of a kingdom or, well, yeah. So let's term it a kingdom. I don't think it uh, it could be termed as empire. And uh, Hartapo is not not a king coming from outside uh, of the land which is mentioned in the inscription, which is Masa, but he is a king of of Masa and who managed to probably consolidate uh, sort of the some uh, some territorial uh, quantity in, in at some point. Uh, so the same uh, um, seems to be present also in another inscription of uh, of, the, of the same king, uh, uh, Karada, uh, which is located so pretty much in the same region. Uh, so this suggests that uh, so the late Bronze Age Massa, well, the location of the late Bronze Age Massa is not 100% clear and uh, its extent also a little bit uh, questionable, but still the uh, connection with uh, uh, with the region which was uh, called in, by Greek authors uh, Musia seems the most probable uh, solution. And um, the point is uh, that uh, so some uh, things associated so with the uh, Hartapu uh, look quite unusual and um, there are not many of them, uh, so well, the, we have uh, finally um, well half a dozen of uh, inscriptions, uh, the, which are traditionally um, uh, ascribed to Hartapu, and one more uh, to which I come in uh, in a minute. Uh, but in any case, yeah, in all these monuments <clears throat> connected so with uh, with Hartapu and his uh, well kingdom, so there are a number of strange uh, things. For example, uh, so the uh, this monument uh, with which the inscription uh, Karadak Four is associated, so it has a sort of like step-like uh, structure, which finds uh, a correspondence in the uh, Phrygian step monuments. The uh, it's not exactly the same as you can see, uh, but still, so the idea of uh, of steps um, hewn in in the rock is there. And uh, the uh, Phrygian step monuments is one of the features which is indeed so like uh, uh, can be defined as a as a, a cultural uh, characteristic of the Phrygian uh, area. Another thing is um, the representation of Hartapo on one of his monuments, which is quite unusual. It's um, it's not Hittite. It's not uh, well. It's not quite exactly the same as uh, we have in Assyrian uh, region, but also, of course, it's uh, obviously not Greek, not Lydian, and uh, so it could be fairly defined as uh, pretty original. But of course, the one of the most uh, well, I would say, striking and interesting uh, things which. Uh, which bring uh, corroboration to the idea that uh, Hartapu uh, is indeed so the king of Massa and uh, represents a sort of migration uh, from the region of Mysia has been found uh, very recently in uh, 2019. So in the form of this, uh, well, actually a stone slab and published uh, well several uh, several months ago, uh, I think uh, so. The in in uh, July or August, uh, so the uh, the article uh, has uh, finally appeared, and uh, the inscription is uh, indeed very interesting. Although, as you can see, it's not uh, extremely long. And uh, yes, on the uh, just to show you on the map, so where the uh, Turkmen Karahuk is, uh, so this number one, and it's just to the north of the uh, Kuzelda and Karada, uh, so the two sides uh, which were previously associated, uh, so with uh, uh, with Hartapu. And uh, so this is the huge uh, hook, uh, huge side. And uh, so uh, although so uh, one hasn't start, uh, started the excavation yet. Uh, I think there are uh, good uh, chances that we are dealing so with the capital of the of the kingdom of uh, Hartab. 
Um, the uh, the inscription is indeed short, but well, a little bit longer than so the, the rest of the inscriptions which we have from, from this king. Uh, I will not discuss the, um, so the, the, so to say, the main uh, historical uh, narrative uh, present in the second line. The most interesting and uh, strikingly simple point is that uh, in this case, Hartapu, uh, instead of mentioning Masa, uh, uh, mentions uh, Mushka. And uh, Mushka, uh, well, they're quite uh, quite well known, uh, so for more than 100 years. And uh, first of all, they're known as a Assyrian uh, name, Assyrian term. Uh, for Phrygians, uh, and um, so there is like some uh, uh, some confusion about uh, Mushka, about the identity of Mushka, because uh, so there are two groups of text, uh, Assyrian text mentioning Mushka. So the earlier ones, which mentioned them in connection with uh, the regions of northern uh, Mesopotamia. And uh, so this is the quite problematic and uh, questionable uh, thing. So what, who are they? But uh, later, uh, so something like uh, three, um, three or four hundred uh, years later, Assyrian sources uh, mention uh, again mention Mushka, and in this um, case, uh, in association with uh, the personal name uh, Mida. And of course, uh, so it was uh, identified uh, well long ago that uh, so the uh, Mida of Mushka is actually Midas of the Phrygians, and uh, mostly so this is uh, accepted. And uh, I think so this uh, inscription uh, well once again confirms this. Uh, well, if anybody doubt, uh, doubted it, uh, but what is uh, interesting in this context is that uh, Mushka now proves to correspond to to Massa in other inscriptions of Hartapu. Which is very interesting, and uh, I think it now it's the element which allows to uh, at least to formulate um, the hypothesis about the name, uh, uh, about the relationship of the names, and the uh, and to bring further evidence about the ethnic or ethno-linguistic identity of mass. Um, so as I uh, already um, assumed uh, several years ago, so the uh, Masa and the Musoi, uh, which are, seems to be located in exactly the same region, uh, could be, uh, well, the same name. So two uh, different reflections of the same name, which can be very uh, tentatively, uh, well, uh, reconstructed as Mus or Mus, uh, whatever it is. Uh, so the, uh, so you, you, we have this, uh, Three forms, Masa, Musoi, and Moisoi. And so we, well, in, in some way, should uh, uh, reconstruct a, a pre form which was able so, to give all three uh, forms. And, uh, and now, so one can also uh, the explain what is quite uh, nicely to have. Uh, so the um, actually, the not not properly etymology or even, even etymology, if you prefer, but in any case, so the structure of the, of the name Mushka. Uh, because one can separate so the root mus uh, so present in in the pure form in musoi and uh, identify the suffix ka and uh, what is quite uh, quite interesting uh, is that the uh, comparable things the uh, the um, extension with the ka su uh, suffix is found uh, uh, most frequently not exclusively but most frequently in the balkan region so the most uh, famous case is probably uh, so the the name uh, of Grajoi, uh, so which uh, which is a, a well alternative form of Graikoi, which is the uh, the um, source of the uh, Latin name uh, Graiki. Uh, but the same is present also in a little bit different region of uh, of the Balkans in Dakoi, uh, who were known also as Daioi. Sporadically, it's found also in Italy. So, in the case of uh, Olsoi, uh, better known as uh, Volsky. But also, well, I'm not sure it's exactly the same uh, phenomenon, but might be a comparable phenomenon. Uh, so, present in the, some doublets, which we have uh, in the case, for example, of uh, Skuthai or skudhikoi or moshoi, moshikoi. So in this case, uh, so the suffix is different. So it's ik, 
uh, but the, in, at least in Greek, so the, uh, the two suffixes were in a way connected. So, in, in general, I would um, think that the story of Phrygian migration uh, might be uh, more complex than a single wave uh, just after uh, uh, 1200 BC. Uh, I think it's quite possible that a part of the Balkan population was present already in Anatolia already uh, before that, already in the late Bronze Age. And what we have um, in the uh, the reflection of what we have uh, in the uh, barbarian wares is actually the next wave uh, of the uh, Balkan population into Anatolia. Okay, but in any case, this is what we have around uh, 800 BC, and uh, so this is the uh, the Phrygians we know, and uh, so the uh, so the Phrygians uh, which I would like so to discuss today more. Uh, in, in some more detail. Uh, the area is huge, uh, but as I already mentioned, so the, uh, uh, it is not quite uh, well covered, uh, equally well covered with material. Actually, the, there are only two regions which are explored in some, uh, well, uh, more or less thoroughly, or at least known um, by a, quite a significant number of, uh, of monuments. Is Gordian, the Phrygian capital, and uh, Phrygian highlands. Uh, the material of, uh, at these two sites are quite different uh, in, in a number of ways. Um, uh, in fact, uh, so, in, uh, so in Gordian, if in Gordian we have the proper uh, uh, well explored site, uh, so with different layers, in the Phrygian highlands we have a number of uh, um, well straight uh, monuments. Um, but still a significant number of them, uh, so it allows to, well, to identify uh, some sort of pattern. So this is the uh, landscape uh, we have close to Gordian. And uh, so what you can see, uh, this is the famous Phrygian uh, tumuli. Some of them uh, are quite still not, uh, uh, well, many of them are excavated, uh, some, some of them not. But uh, the most interesting uh, point is that uh, some of them still preserve uh, some material inside, as for example, so the famous uh, the uh, Midas monument, and uh, this is the uh, Gordian itself, and uh, so uh, this is how the site uh, looks uh, from uh, from above. And uh, so you can, uh, so from these photos, you can um, make some, uh, um, well, some, uh, get some idea of the Phrygian uh, landscape and uh, at least part of it, at least in the central Phrygia. And uh, already, uh, uh, so the fact that we know basically on uh, only one significant Phrygian um, city and uh, so the, um, the um, the landscape as we have it uh, already suggests uh, the uh, the type of um, type of society. In all probability, it was at least uh, in part a nomadic society. Whatever one uh, um, whatever one understands uh, under that, and uh, whatever so uh, however uh, one wants to reconstruct the details of this uh, nomadic lifestyle. The um, the landscape of the uh, Phrygian highlands uh, was quite different, and uh, probably also the uh, the way of life uh, in this area was quite different. Um, so this is quite a beautiful uh, landscape, uh, but still, uh, as uh, as today, is it's not extremely uh, agriculturally uh, productive. Uh, well, as uh, uh, the Phrygian area in general. So, as I uh, as I mentioned, uh, so in the uh, in Phrygian highlands, one finds a number of uh, of monuments, but many of them look like that. Yeah. So it's what you, you can see something, you can identify something, but what is that exactly, and uh, what stands, what exactly stands behind that? It's not easy to to say. Well, this this is probably tombs, but well. Uh, just to have a tomb is uh, not much. One, one would prefer to, to know who, uh, who and how exactly and when uh, was buried there. 
and sometimes you you've got also uh, rock uh, monuments um, luckily sometimes with inscriptions uh, because otherwise it would be difficult to uh, interpret either uh, but sometimes uh, so uh, the inscription still uh, gives some some idea what uh, what uh, what could it be um, and still there is another source uh, of evidence about Phrygians, the um, graffiti. Uh, the good thing about uh, graffiti is that uh, so they are present in, in a relatively significant number and uh, the majority of them comes uh, from one side. And um, even if, uh, as you can see, um, they are quite short inscriptions, well, they, uh, sometimes it's uh, even difficult to term it uh, inscription because uh, finally, of course, it's, it's inscribed, but it's so, uh, well, um, unfruitful, uh, so gives so uh, little information that sometimes uh, one thinks, well, what, 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 can, what, what can one get from, uh, from graffiti? But still, uh, some of them, a little bit um, longer and uh, better preserved. And some of them are uh, really great. Uh, so as for example, so this uh, graffiti on the uh, sort of uh, handle of the of a drinking cup. And uh, so as you can see, so it's uh, completely preserved and it's long. And uh, to be honest, uh, this, um, well, uh, exactly, uh, exactly this text and a couple of uh, other texts uh, were the source of inspiration uh, for me when I, uh, well, thought uh, so to, uh, uh, so to go to Gordian and so to, uh, to collate the graffiti available uh, in the museum, uh, because I thought uh, that the studying them uh, in detail, studying uh, every piece of evidence, and uh, well, uh, attempt to um, uh, well to make a, a sense of it, to 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 um, to reconstruct uh, some sort uh, sort of picture uh, using all of them, might finally uh, lead to something and uh, give some idea what sort of society uh, was uh, the Phrygian society. To be honest, I, uh, the, my first idea, um, especially looking at this text, was, uh, well, this might be uh, quite a poetic text. Uh, well, it's, it's a drinking cup, and uh, so we have, uh, well, this, uh, we, we know for sure that uh, Phrygians drank wine. And I thought, well, this might be actually something like uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, cup of Nestor, uh, the Phrygian variant of it. And um, at some point, I, I should sell, uh, tell you so that I hope to identify even the, uh, the idea of drinking in the, at the end of the first line in this uh, posa or ek posa, ok posa. Uh, so which, which I think still uh, might be possible uh, that it's connected so with, uh, with uh, po, uh, so to, 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 to drink, uh, uh, so the same root as in poterion, for example, but still in any case, uh, so uh, even uh, working so with, uh, with graffiti, which has, was able to, uh, to do in uh, 2019 uh, at Gordian, I, I, uh, I remain very, uh, very unsure about uh, so this particular text. But the work in Gordian, uh, brought actually uh, two uh, different sets of results uh, in, uh, in, a, um, in different domain. And uh, well, in a way, uh, unexpected domain. So the, the general idea of the, uh, of the graffiti from Guardian, so if you, um, uh, if you look in the original publication by, uh, well, uh, the, the publication which, um, reconciles uh, all the evidence uh, by uh, Claude Briggs, uh, is that the majority of the graffiti are simply names, personal names, which is, well, uh, quite, um, for, for a linguist, it's of course not, not very uh, uh, joyful material, yeah? So you, you get, uh, well, the uh, names, and uh, so if you, if, you, if you have no comparative material, uh, so you, uh, you can do nothing. Uh, but sometimes, uh, well, the names are good in, in the sense uh, that uh, so they uh, uh, may be used as uh, historical evidence. 
and um, so by by some uh, well lucky chance actually. Uh, so the uh, in uh, the campaign uh, 2019, uh, they have been found. Um, uh, so the um, this graffiti, so which you uh, which you can see on the uh, lower part. Um, so with uh, with a sequence uh, which was uh, already known from well nearly exactly in into other graffitis. Uh, so uh, one was uh, almost completely preserved, Dumastaeia. Um, well, it's completely preserved, but yeah, so the, uh, there was no certainty about the, uh, if it's indeed of the first letter. And um, uh, on a different graffiti, so you can, uh, you can see something like that. Uh, so with the, uh, with the first uh, letter slightly uh, damaged uh, and a little bit different, uh, uh, well, form of the uh, second uh, verb uh, with uh, additional w. Um, well, for example, bricks uh, uh, even does not uh, uh, separate uh, so these words and uh, gives uh, uh, it as uh, Dumas uh, Taeya, so as a one one name. But uh, this is what the, uh, this is the case when one can uh, indeed so suggest quite an interesting uh, identification. And um, a part of this identification is also connected so with a different uh, graffiti, uh, so which features, uh, well, uh, quite a long sequence, uh, partly broken, but which can be uh, with confidence uh, restored as uh, asuiados, asuiados. And uh, so the, uh, quite interestingly, one can, uh, well, the, in asuiados, one can easily identify, so the, uh, the Patronymic form uh, of uh, uh, of the name uh, Asios or Asios, which we uh, would expect. And uh, interestingly, so the both names Dumas and uh, Asios uh, we find in in Homer in a very uh, well in a very clear context, uh, which um, which. Uh, Let's a little doubt that uh, so we are dealing so with the uh, Phrygians. Uh, so the uh, so this is the um, so the uh, passage which uh, one um, uh, which uh, which refers to uh, um, to, uh, to Hector. And uh, so at some point, uh, so there appears a man so who resembles. Uh, Asios, uh, who was the uncle to Hostame and Hector, and uh, the brother of Hikabe or uh, Hekube, uh, how she uh, she's known in, in later text, uh, and the son of Dumas. This is quite striking, so that uh, Dumas appears as a Phrygian uh, king, uh, not very known, of course, from other sources, uh, but also together with uh, As Asios. And, uh, and now it looks like uh, that we have both names in the uh, graffiti from Gordian, um, which is on, as a matter of fact, on the streams of Sangarius. And um, well, dated probably around, well, I would say uh, around uh, uh, between 800 BC and 700 BC. Which is, according to some scholars, is um, quite close to the time of uh, when uh, Homer himself lived, and I think this is quite an interesting um, correspondence. And uh, well, it says not only uh, in in this case uh, not only about the Phrygians, but it uh, tells us something about uh, Homer and the uh, the relationship uh, between the the the, the poem the Iliad and the historical reality. But also probably it uh, allows us to identify in, uh, in Dumas, uh, indeed a king, uh, which makes good sense uh, because finally, so all these uh, things were found on uh, the, uh, well, in the uh, Gordian Citadel, which is uh, pretty much a uh, royal compound. And uh, so if one, accepts this uh, as a working hypothesis. So we have actually an object, an object uh, possessed by the King uh, Dumas. Um, and uh, then so we can uh, 
make some hypothesis about Taeya. And in this case, I would say there, uh, there are two possibilities. Uh, so it's either um, a feminine name, simply so the queen, mm -hmm. which was uh, associated so with uh, Dumas, or um, it, if we uh, think uh, that Dumas is actually a genitive, uh, because it could be it could be both. Uh, so the uh, in theory, so uh, Dumas might be a nominative and genitive. Taeya might be uh, something like uh, stuff or uh, possession and so on. So this is the uh, one of the things which I was uh, able so to find uh, so in uh, in graffiti. So the importance of the uh, anomastic material and so the which on the one and uh, disproved my my hope to to find something uh, connected so with the, with the cult of uh, Dionysus in in the Gordian, but on the other hand, it uh, brought evidence uh, well, which may be used uh, for a reconstruction of history of Gordian. So the other thing, which <clears throat> so which belongs to quite a different. Um, uh, to quite a different domain is the um, is um, epigraphy or style. At some point, I uh, I was um, I saw that a number of uh, graffiti, uh, as in Gordian as uh, elsewhere, so the thing which you see on the uh, left uh, uh, left hand side uh, below uh, comes actually from uh, from Tepteria, so in the eastern part of the Phrygian area. Uh, the uh, so the writing is uh, the style of writing is quite unusual, and uh, so the uh, the letters are very uh, slender, so they are uh, high, and uh, so the side elements are uh, very short. So it's it's found uh, both in the um, in the graffiti uh, uh, and some uh, some stone monuments. Uh, uh, so in 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 every. Um, Every direction of the Phrygian uh, uh, zone, as in uh, Firanlar, which is in uh, Bithynia, uh, and in uh, Alajahuk, which is uh, beyond uh, Kizilerma. Uh, quite importantly, so the same uh, style is found uh, in the uh, graffiti uh, found very recently uh, in the famous uh, uh, Midas uh, uh, mound. Uh, so uh, during the um, so the additional research uh, uh, undertaken by uh, Brian Rose and, uh, and his colleagues. And so they found uh, so these uh, uh, four names. Uh, unfortunately, no information about the, uh, so the construction of the mount and so on, but still, uh, and so like, again, seemingly uh, unimpressive names. Uh, but I think uh, so. They uh, they still uh, contain uh, bits of very uh, precious information, and one of the things is the uh, the style of letters. Uh, so the uh, this is the same style, uh, uh, so which I would uh, term a slender style, and. Um, so I uh, so in uh, in a recent article, so I described it like uh, so the. Uh, so in the, in the style, the vertical hasta are significantly longer and the oblique strokes when present are very short. So that uh, the average width height ratio in the letters of, uh, of a structure, vertical hasta and oblique strokes is between one to five. Um, and uh, sometimes, uh, well, from, from between one to five and uh, one to three. Uh, and uh, even uh, wide letters, as uh, for example R, are very lean. Um, and the uh, the widest letter of the Phrygian and uh, in general so of the Greek alphabet M is uh, somewhat less than uh, one to uh, to two. And uh, so this style uh, has a strong correlation with the uh, earliest form of the Phrygian S, uh, which is a uh, multi-bar or uh, has a even snake-like form. Yes, yeah, so like going. Uh, Back to the um, graffiti of uh, of the uh, Midas Mound, so you can see. Uh, so the how slender, for example, U, uh, or uh, even Delta. So the Delta is is uh, very high, and so these uh, many many strokes uh, of of sigma. 
what is very important uh, that the uh, uh, the graffiti, the recent graffiti of, from the uh, tumulus MM, uh, so the uh, they allow to anchor uh, this uh, style with uh, well with uh, um, quite a good precision around uh, 700 um, 740 uh, BC. So the which is actually uh, uh, the uh, heyday of the Phrygian, uh, Phrygian culture and uh, literacy. Uh, what is quite interesting, uh, well, the, uh, that was the actual the idea which triggered uh, so the, this uh, observation uh, in me, so uh, that the, the similar style is found also in the, in the Aegean, uh, so in different, uh, in different areas. Uh, so the, uh, the, as far as I can see, there is uh, no um, no exact or clear correlation uh, between the, the uh, uh, place uh, and time of find, but in any case, all of them are very early. Uh, so, uh, well, around uh, shortly, uh, uh, slightly before or uh, slightly after 7, 7 BC. And uh, so the something like that you can see on the famous uh, Dipolon um, jug. Uh, the um, Manticlos dedication uh, and uh, also in Rhodes. And uh, so I would not make a direct uh, link, uh, chronological link between the uh, Phrygian uh, style and the Greek style, but uh, I think the, uh, so the idea that uh, so the, of the relatively early phase associated so with this slender style uh, holds uh, for both uh, for both regions okay so now uh, we um, we move on uh, from guardian to so to uh, Midas city and uh, so the uh, this idea can be uh, well in Quite reasonably applied, uh, so in the analysis of the historical uh, context of the uh, Midas monument, uh, this is the the, the first and, the, and main uh, the monument of the uh, Midas city, and uh, it has two inscriptions. So the one is on the uh, on the upper part uh, and uh, slightly above the monument itself, and there is one uh, which is on the on the side of uh, of the of the monument. And uh, usually it was, uh, well, the, the, um, the idea is that the, uh, the upper inscription is the main one because it, the, on the uh, upper part and it's frontal and the, uh, the side one is the secondary inscription, which is, uh, uh, um, which is then secondary. And a uh, quite important uh, thing is the dating of this uh, monument. And uh, there has been proposed, uh, well, two uh, quite uh, different um, datings. So um, on the one hand, uh, so one uh, analyzing, so the uh, circle of monuments within uh, Midas uh, city, one uh, thought uh, that it should be quite late because there is a so-called unfinished uh, monument and which is on the first uh, glance quite comparable with uh, what we can see uh, so uh, in the main uh, Midas monument. But there is a uh, one uh, small but quite significant detail. So this, uh, the uh, plant-like uh, thing. And this uh, plant-like uh, thing of Palmet, uh, well, uh, this is quite a late thing. Uh, which is usually associated with Lydians. And it's uh, thought that, uh, so it was, well, sort of invented or uh, developed in Lydia and uh, Iolis, and then moved uh, inland uh, to the uh, Phrygian highlands. And also one uh, usually connects with all these uh, monuments, also the so-called uh, Ariastis uh, monument. So, which means that, uh, well, the, the general interpretation was that, yeah, the uh, Midas city is the cult uh, center. Uh, and so the main, uh, um, well, it's not quite clear when exactly it, it uh, came into being, but the main monument uh, monuments uh, uh, are connected. So with the Phrygian, uh, with, with the Lydian, I'm sorry, with the Lydian uh, domination of, 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 this, uh, of this area, which is quite, well, in a way, strange, yeah. So because one of the, as I mentioned, so the uh, Phrygian highlands and the uh, Midas uh, Midas city is one of the uh, few uh, 
clearly identifiable uh, frigid things, and it will be strange, so that is uh, finally lithium time. And on the other hand, uh, Brian Rose uh, compared uh, so the uh, so the mo main monument um, so with the uh, uh, with the with the plan of the uh, Megara, which are found in in Gorion, and uh, so and uh, well the so the reasonably assumed uh, that uh, well that should be pretty much the same uh, the uh, so the the plan and so the as as far as one can judge from different uh, uh, different uh, types of evidence, it is the same. And then uh, it should be connected so with the uh, eighth century and so with the uh, heyday of the Phrygian, Phrygian statehood, Phrygian culture, and so on, and uh, which is, well, looks uh, in a way logical. Uh, so the problem then is uh, so how one can uh, if and how one can uh, proceed uh, using uh, so the um, the evidence of the um, of the alphabet of the letter forms, and I think uh, so they uh, indeed uh, helpful because just the um, well it is uh, in the uh, this is the transcription uh, by uh, by bricks and so you cannot uh, see the difference uh, so strikingly but if we if we go back uh, and see uh, look at the mon uh, monument so you can see that uh, the um, the side inscription uh, is definitely in this uh, slender style. Uh, so it's indeed, so the letters are very uh, uh, tall and the uh, side elements are quite, uh, uh, quite short. Uh, so the, uh, the main uh, features of the slender style are present and uh, look for example also on the uh, tiny M uh, at the end of, uh, of the inscription. The uh, letter forms of the upper inscription are not too different. Uh, but still different, yeah. So the letters are uh, assuming so little, uh, a little bit uh, more uh, usual uh, form as as we know uh, know them. And um, so the so there is probably some difference in uh, in the chronology of these two uh, two inscriptions. And if we indeed take uh, the um, indication of the slender style seriously and um, associate it with us um, with the time around 740, so the uh, reconstruction would be uh, the following. So the main inscription uh, is the side inscription, uh, which is on the uh, in fact inscribed in the monument. Uh, so and uh, in this sense is uh, looks not not uh, impossible. And uh, so the uh, also the um, the content of the inscription is uh, also speaks about uh, so like it confirms that uh, because it names the monument C. Uh, Kenemon, unlike the second inscription, so the which uh, does not make uh, uh, any mention of the uh, of the uh, monument. And uh, so I would say that uh, the behind this uh, appellation, Kenema stands the, just what we what we see the facade or probably uh, even the normal word for uh, for a palace because we we do not know exactly if the Phrygians thought it's a uh, it's a monument uh, it's a it's an emulation of the palace or its palace uh, itself. And I would. Uh, Connect the second inscription uh, with a um, with a phase uh, with a following phase in the uh, in the history of the monument. It's very difficult to say what exactly was the event uh, so uh, which gave rise to this inscription. I would uh, think uh, this might be the new stature of uh, Cybele, uh, and so this is the uh, the monument. Uh, very likely connected so with the main uh, Phrygian goddess uh, Cybele, uh, which was uh, dedicated on behalf of uh, King Midas, or it might be some sort of construction of the monument. So uh, some probably some additional details uh, um, have been added, but I think so. The statue is uh, is a better possibility, and I would date it so later, not too much late, uh, later, but still uh, later, probably, well, uh, 40, well, 30, 40 years. Um, 
so and still connected so with the uh, with the main uh, with the with the time of uh, of Frisian um, uh, Frisian uh, culture. Okay, then very quickly. So because I'm already running uh, out of time, about third um, third monument or um, well third uh, set of evidence which uh, concerns uh, uh, Kerkenes. Uh, this is the monument which has been uh, well discovered. Um, it was known long before, but the some uh, some sort of archaeological activity, uh, well, first survey and then excavation started in the late 90s. And uh, as you can see, it is much to the east of the uh, main Phrygian uh, area. Uh, so it's uh, the um, quite. Uh, it's even uh, to the east of uh, Boasque, uh, which is the uh, uh, another. Uh, important uh, Phrygian, well, settlement, I would say. Uh, and uh, so this is the, uh, well, what one usually calls uh, Hittite, uh, Hittite highlands. Uh, so like the hilly and the quite uh, high and uh, harsh landscape. Uh, the name, uh, the, the monument uh, Kerkenes Da uh, is in many respects unique. Uh, well, it looks like it's a one layer monument so that it was uh, the city was uh, founded, something built upon it, and then it was uh, this has been destructed at some point, and uh, ceased to exist. Very strange uh, thing, um, and uh, and very interesting in in, in this uh, sense. And uh, probably a most uh, intriguing thing that uh, an inscription uh, has been found there. So just one, uh, well. It depends how one uh, terms inscription. Is actually one monument with a uh, well with a series of inscriptions. It's it was found just in this uh, so-called uh, Cappadocia Gate, and uh, so the so the uh, sort of monument which has been found in uh, in these uh, in uh, in pieces, which uh, one can reconstruct. Uh, well, which which uh, we are proposed to reconstruct like that. Uh, so a sort of uh, well. Uh, pedestal with a statue on it, uh, and uh, this sort of uh, well, the the lower part of the monument is provided with inscriptions. And uh, the um, the general idea about the site, about the identification of the site, um, has been proposed all, already quite early. Well, actually, uh, Geoffrey Summers uh, only took up, uh, picked up the idea which uh, which was expressed earlier. In uh, in any case, uh, so his idea was uh, that the site corresponds to uh, Pteria. And uh, this is well quite unusual site. I mentioned only once uh, uh, in Herodotus as a battle, uh, so between the uh, the forces of uh, Croesus, the Lydian king, and uh, Cyrus. And uh, usually, so as you can see, well, uh, it it is in a way associated with uh, Cappadocia, so one of the few sites which are uh, actually associated with this region by Herodotus. Uh, although, uh, so uh, he does not uh, tell us exactly where uh, where it was, and uh, uh, in addition, he uh, mentions some uh, Sinope or, and also uh, Black Sea uh, in connection with that. So, which is quite uh, confusing the picture. In any case, uh, so the idea of Geoffrey Summers is that the site is uh, is Pteria, and uh, so and uh, which uh, which has quite a, a lot of uh, historical implications. It means that the site is uh, quite recent. It's sixth uh, century uh, BC. Uh, it should be sixth century BC. So because it's uh, the site which existed about uh, well uh, thirty, probably forty years, uh, probably even less than that. And if uh, it it has been uh, dis, uh, destroyed uh, so during the campaign of, of Cyrus, it should be dated to the sixth century BC. The problem is that the uh, this inscription is. Uh, very different uh, from what one would expect for the 6th century BC. Uh, as you uh, can uh, already see yourself, uh, the uh, inscription uh, has very uh, prominent uh, features of this slender style. I will say this is the most, the, the slender, uh, this slenderest inscription uh, uh, of all. So uh, look, for example, at the air. 
uh, in the lower part. So it, it is really uh, uh, like a fishbone, uh, very, very high uh, upper uh, uh, vertical hosta with a lot of uh, small um, strokes added. And uh, look at the uh, at the sigma, which is uh, again a sort of uh, well the snake-like uh, uh, letter. And um, quite interestingly, uh, the uh, even in this uh, in this inscription, which is supposed to be monumental inscription, the scribe is uh, very irregular. So sometimes you can find a. Uh, seven uh, strokes with uh, air, sometimes uh, four, sometimes three, sometimes five, and the same also with the sigma. But in any case, so the general, uh, so the uh, impression, it's, it should be very, very archaic. And um, another thing, uh, which is uh, unusual thing of the inscription, uh, which you can see on the uh, lower part of the uh, inscription, is that there is some uh, well, which on the first glance might be uh, taken as a word uh, divider because it's a very small lunural thing. Uh, well, a small thing, but on the other hand, so we know how the uh, uh, word uh, dividers uh, looked in the Phrygian inscriptions and uh, they are not like that. So it should be actually a letter. And uh, one, another indication uh, which uh, speaks for the certain irregularity or uniqueness of the inscription. Uh, this is uh, one thing. And the other thing is uh, the name, which is found uh, in this inscription. And um, so the, um, in, the, in, this, uh, in all these pieces uh, of inscription, which, uh, which has been found, so one, uh, one could uh, read uh, two actually longer sequences and uh, one of the sequences is uh, Masa Urgitos Dakor Svebra. Uh, the, uh, so the bird, uh, well, the, uh, this is the um, third division by, by bricks and uh, so there's every reason to, uh, to accept it. So because Dakor can be identified as a verbal form connected so with, uh, with the verb uh, Da or Dak. Uh, so, which is either, in any case, uh, the uh, um, Indo-European, uh, which would be either put or made, which, which is what would uh, what we would expect in this uh, context. And uh, Swabra is not quite clear, uh, but it looks like uh, Masa Urgitos is just the personal name with a patronymic. So, Masa is a name, uh, Urgitos patronymic. And uh, so, the thing is that in the uh, in quite a different area in and a, uh, quite a different uh, type of monument in the hieroglyphic Lumen inscription Porsuk. So we find uh, a name which is strikingly similar. In this uh, case, I would uh, say that uh, the striking is not an exaggeration because this is a pretty long sequence. Uh, and the uh, name can be read as Masa Urhisans. And this is the king uh, with uh, whom uh, the author of this inscription of Parsuk, uh, Parhuiras, is in a way associated. So he doesn't uh, say anything, any details about the, uh, so who is this king, but gives his name, Masa, uh, Masa uh, Urhisas. And uh, it looks like, so given the uh, uniqueness of this uh, sequence and the, uh, so the, uh, its uh, length, I think there is every uh, reason to think this is the same name and uh, the same the same person who is uh, referred in in both cases, and um, and I would say uh, the the name is uh, is not uh, not Luvian, and in fact in uh, all names in the in the description of Porsuk uh, uh, are not not Luvian, and uh, so just uh, not to give you uh, too much uh, detail, so Atisa is uh, quite obviously the same as Atis, which is uh, the most one of the most. Uh, uh, known Phrygian names. And uh, so I would uh, say uh, that, uh, so along with uh, the uh, evidence of the uh, epigraphy of the uh, inscription, uh, uh, the, uh, this piece of evidence suggests that the inscription is actually one uh, contemporary, uh, contemporary with the uh, hieroglyphic Lovian inscription of Parsuk. Uh, whose dating is not uh, entirely clear, but in any case, it's uh, before seven, um, 700 uh, BC. So it's, it's very early. Uh, and um, I would say that 
well, it uh, does not still explain everything about the Kerkines da, uh, but I think the uh, this changes the perspective quite uh, quite profoundly. And uh, and I would say that uh, so the this is the inscription, and uh, this is the monument associated with the very early expansion of the Phrygian culture with the Phrygian uh, well uh, ethnic ethno linguistic area. Uh, to the east, and uh, so the uh, which has quite a lot of uh, different implications. Uh, well, uh, let me uh, let me finish uh, at this uh, at this point. Uh, so, without making any um, any general uh, conclusions, uh, I hope uh, that uh, this was um, interesting, and uh, so it uh, well it's. Um, demonstrated uh, so the uh, several points uh, how one can use the epigraphy in combination with the history and other uh, uh, indications uh, so to date and uh, so to to clarify the earlier Phrygian history thank you so much <laughs>